Hey guitar fam and friends, how you doing? Uh, it's Nate here. I wanted to do a video on boiling down the guitar and that may sound funny to you, but um, a full disclosure, this is a video on convincing you to learn the notes on the fretboard, but there's a bigger story to that. So I'll start the story out for you. Uh, there was a guitar player one time who um, you know, started playing guitar a lot like most other people, learn your bar chords, learn your pentatonics, and then eventually he got into guitar more and he started, and like he heard that you know you should be learning scales a lot. So he got some books, uh, some software, some videotapes, and learned a bunch of scales. And over the years, he learned more and more scales and just thought to himself, if I keep working on these, my phrasing will get better and I'll know how to improvise over chord changes. My ear will just kind of take over or I'll just get so familiar with them that I'll be able to do it, All right? Well, years went by, and that never happened. Uh, he just got frustrated not being able to play over chord changes and being stuck playing through scale shapes. Now, that might sound familiar to you. I know it sounds familiar to me because this story is all about me. That's the way I started playing guitar. And um, even like in the middle of that, I even asked some really famous uh, guitarists that you would recognize, okay, what, what do you think of when you're playing over something basic like a one to four chord change? And I never got a good answer. I just did not get a good answer. And that was really frustrating. And so it really made me have to dig in and discover and investigate why. Why is it so hard to use scale shapes? And don't get me wrong, I'm not, uh, I don't regret learning those scale shapes. It's great to have the whole fretboard kind of laid out to you from the key of G major, C and a G major scale everywhere you can. It's kind of the overlying uh, thing, but that's like a cloud or like that's running in your RAM in the background, right? It's always there, but it's not the primary thing that I'm thinking about. Um, the fact is that playing a G major scale like this is just too much information to, um, to deal with to create a solo as the uh, chords are going by. And over the years, the main thing that I've learned about guitar is you have to boil things down to a manageable size chunk that, uh, that you can actually use on the guitar. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so I gave the example of a G major scale. So let's take just this G major scale. Right, I mean, it sounds great. It's great to be able to have the facility to play through this. And that's one of the reasons I think I got stuck on scale song was because I like fast, aggressive playing. And fast, aggressive playing often uses scales. But like when you're trying to play over chord changes, I don't wanna say it's useless, but it's fairly, <laughs> it's not as useful as you would think it would. So. The idea of boiling things down, and this is over decades of going through this, uh, hit me or struck me as like, oh, this is all I've been doing. I've been boiling things down. The first thing I boiled down to was the major pentatonic, right? So. That's a little bit better. It doesn't sound as academic like I'm going through just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, you know, that, that kind of Dory Me stuff. And that's good, and that's where a lot of guitar players go to, and that's where a lot of guitar players get stuck. Not that there's anything wrong with that, that type of playing definitely isn't necessary. Yet, you have to have that in your playing, you know what I mean? But it's still very hard to um, play over chord changes, with even with just pentatonics, because they're so big, right? You have this giant, all those notes to choose from, like even when you're playing just over a G to a C. And sometimes you can hit notes that sound bad and it's, it gets a little bit unpredictable. Um, from there, through a, a few really good uh, resources like Guthrie Trapp's Solo on Caged and then uh, the book, uh, what is it, Fretboard Logic, I learned that, okay, I need to start thinking about the chord, the notes in the chord, okay? And that helps, like if I'm playing over G, those are the important landmark notes. I'm just thinking about the notes in that chord shape. So chord shape, boil it down even more because a, a G major scale has seven notes in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. A G major pentatonic takes out one, two, three, the four, five is in there, six, and it takes out the seven. So it's just five notes, right? Then you're gonna take two more notes out of that for your notes in your, um, your chord shapes, your, or in this case, I would call them arpeggios, right? Because you're playing them one note at a time. It's just you take the two and the six out, and you're left with one, three, five, one, three, five, one. Just the important notes in a chord that you know are going to sound good. If somebody's playing a G chord, you can play. You can play those notes, okay? Now, that's great because 
If I'm playing over a G chord, I can see the important notes, so I can go. I can go pentatonic, or I can go uh, arpeggio notes in the chord just to make it a little more pointed to fit over that chord. And then when I change the notes to a C chord, even if I only switch to one note out of the chord, that's the third, like I'm just hitting that, uh, the notes in the C chord as an arpeggio. That's way easier than sitting here fishing around for notes that out of uh, that G major scale that um, fit over that C chord. And it's, it's a little bit better than the major pentatonic because the four isn't even in there. The root note of the four chord isn't even in there. So I would think about like, if it's, especially if you're going to a chord really quick, it's only for like two beats for that C chord, I'll just hit a C for a little bit and then continue on with the G major pentatonic, right? But boiling it down to just seeing these arpeggios was the next step in the reduction recipe of, you know, how do I get away from scales and start actually using, being able to play over chord shapes. The one after that, the next step, and the, I guess it'd be the second to the last step, would be triads. And all triads are, the chords are made up of roots, thirds, and fifths, right? And the arpeggios, that's all that's in there. And all I started doing was trying to break these arpeggios apart, these big, our pages apart into smaller little bite-sized chunks that I can actually use, right? We gotta, because even though this is only root, thirds, and fifths, that's still a lot of notes. What if I just had just these root, third, fifth, or just this third, fifth root? That's much easier to wield a small shape like that, especially if a chord's going by fast. Sometimes that's all you have time to do. Or if you have this C chord that's an A shape, what if I just take the top three notes, root, third, fifth? And this is all about, um, it's like, when I first learned this, somebody said, learn all these triads. And I was like, okay, why? So I just tried to learn them, and there are so many that I could not learn them all, or I thought I couldn't, and I had no idea how to use them. But when I took them back and looked at them with just pieces of these bigger chord shapes, that's when they started being really usable to me. Um, for major and minor to start, and then you can do diminished and uh, augmented as well. But for the sake of this video, just think about major chords. So, so when I move from like a G chord, I have these important notes that I can hit. Move to a C. And that's a pretty academic version of it, but if you're listening to like Gilmore, or any number of other really stable players, they're hitting chord tones like that and just kind of filling in with pentatonics. That's what's actually happening. And some players might be aware that they're doing it, some players uh, might be doing it intentionally, some people might be just following their ear. But regardless, that's what happens a lot. If I could see the chords and break them up into smaller little bits, that makes it much more manageable to play over guitar chord changes. And uh, like the whole reason for this uh, video that I'm doing this is because I'm working on a caged course right now and um, one of the modules in there is on memorizing the notes on the fretboard because it's really tough to learn the cage uh, system without knowing the notes on the fretboard. I say that to say this, the last stage of the reduction to boil things down is to learn the notes on the fretboard, okay? And I know that's a lot of work and it can be very intimidating and daunting at first, but it's exactly where you should probably start because I started the exact opposite. I started with a major scale. And I was like, well, crap, I can't improvise with that, it's tough. And then I started with a major pentatonic. I was like, okay, that's a little bit better. Now I started then the arpeggio. And then like, well, okay, that's cool, but what if I, I don't need that much, right? Then I boiled that down to just these little fragments so I can choose my notes. But none of that works unless I know that this is a G, right? I have to know that that's a G in order to be able to play the, you know, the third or the fifth or just know where to put that arpeggio, right? So learning the notes on the fretboard is the first step because like what if I'm playing, um, let's uh, do a key change, what if I'm playing over an A chord and somebody says take a solo and like, oh no, what do I do? Well, I, I know that there's an A here and I know that if I have a root note on this B string, then this little D shape, this triad, 
can be used, and I know that this is a root, this is a third, and this is a fifth. And if I, with that knowledge, you see how I'm, I started with just this, okay, I know that that's A. Now I could fill in that A with this chord shape. And if I wanted to, I could fill in with a pentatonic or a major scale. But you don't have to be able to do that. If you just know that there's an A there, and you know this little D shape, we can do is like, I know that's a third. And that's perfectly fine, even more simple than that. If somebody's playing an egg. All of a sudden, you have at least one note that you can play if you know that's an A, if you put in the work to memorize the notes on the fretboard. And then if you've put in the work to memorize your uh, chord shapes, then you know have three little anchor points, a third, a root, and a fifth. That you can choose from to play your solos. And like most songs are gonna be flipping through chords. So like if you moved to uh, a four chord in the key of A, which is a D. So if I hit start on this on an A, I know there's a D right here. And if there's a D on the high A string, I know it's this shape for an E. I know this is a lot. I, this isn't meant to um, say, hey, go do this now. This is meant, I'm trying to convince you to learn the notes on the fretboard. That's basically what it boils down to. And once the cage course is up on guitarfam.com, if you have um, a, a premium membership, you'll be able to go through that. And uh, it'll come with practice alongs and practice sessions and everything like that. But this is a D4 in the key of A, right? So I know. That's my chord shape. So instead of just knowing that D, I know this is the third, a fifth, and then the root. So A major. And if I wanted to, I could revert back to, you know, just A major pentatonic. Then there's that D. And that's the idea of like, as long as you know your fretboard, like if you're playing over a B flat, I know that's a B flat. You have at least one note you can do. But if you know the triad or the chord shape, you have at least three notes you can do. And then if you know the pentatonic, you have the whole pentatonic. And then if you have a major skill, you have a major skill. And that's in order from easiest to hardest to wield. And most guitar players started from hardest to easiest. So I would encourage you to just start learning the notes on the fretboard. Uh, as soon as I get a, uh, the videos out, for learning the fretboard of this new caged uh, course, I'll uh, uh, link to them in this video. Or you can just go to guitarfm.com and check and see uh, when the course will be coming out. I'm just now getting started uh, writing it. I'm uh, probably going to start filming. It'll probably take a few months to film. But it's worth it. That's what uh, people said they wanted in the 2023 Guitar FM survey. And, and more importantly, I just wanted to share this with you because I don't want you to be frustrated like I did learning how, like I have enough facility to play through that major scale, but it's not very musical, right? I want you to see, just think about flipping things on their heads. So instead of starting with a major scale, then major pentatonic, then the chord shape, then the arpeggio, then the notes, start with the notes first and build up from there. So start with the notes and then like a G and then think about the chord shape or just the arpeggio out of that chord shape, right? Or the triad, right? and then whole chord shape, and then arpeggio, and then, then the major scale. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, really, it is more of an encouragement. It's not meant to, to give you the be all and end all for chords, arpeggios, triads, all that stuff. It's meant to encourage you to start learning the notes on the fretboard, and to just take it you know, one day at a time. Just spend three to five minutes a day on it. That's all, and take it one string at a time. I'll put a video out uh, pretty soon on like my best tips for memorizing the notes on the fretboard faster. So be looking forward to that. In the meantime, go to guitarfam.com, create your complimentary account, and go through all the resources there. We have stuff for strumming, bar chords, finger style, the blues, and the first module of all of our premium courses is free if you create a complimentary account. And if you want to do a monthly or annual membership to a premium membership, you'll get access to all of our premium courses. I look forward to seeing you there.